hello and welcome to Design Education Talks, the collaboration between New Art School and Design Deducts Podcast. Our guest today is Tommaso Maggio. Welcome, Tommaso. Oh, thanks to you. Thanks for inviting me to be part of this great conversation. I follow this podcast since a while, and I saw a lot of people, a lot of names that uh, I read sometime from conference to other sites. So it's nice to see finally something alive where we can really engage and put on plate something that is always in our mind. Thank it's you. Great. It's great to have you here. It's a real pleasure. So tell us about you. Well, I'm a designer with a passion for education. So a passion and a study on education. I'm doing my PhD on alternative design education that goes from early childhood to adult education. So I started my career into design education after graduating at Polytechnic of Milano in Italy. And since there, I started to work as a professor at IAD, Istituto Europeo of Design, and NABA, Nova Academia of Belle Arti. So I teach there for a while, and then ended up in Mexico City to teach there and in Monterey, where I had the chance to do several workshops on design innovation. And while I was almost setting up to stay in Mexico City, uh, a call from Bangkok arrived. So I decided to unpack basically my stuff, <laughs> create new stuff, and fly to Bangkok City, where initially the plan was to say six months to join a new program in communication design. So it was the first known tie to do that. So since then, passed a bit of time. And nowadays, we're still working on design, education. We have set up several programs in communication, product design. I work even on business uh, education, where I blend it with creativity innovation. So nowadays, I have a uh, kid two years old. And since then, I'm, I focus more my attention on the childhood and develop some program with international school for this group of people, let's say the new generation. That's very, very interesting because all, all the challenges we're facing in higher education come from, come from early years. And, I, and I've always said that it's, 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 it's the early years we've got to look at. So tell us, that's what's quite unique about you. Tell us about your projects in early years that you're doing. Well, this again start since I have been a father. So beside my, of course, beside my interest in terms of education and research practice, so COVID helped on this. So the good side that we spend a lot of time with uh, our kids. So we need to find a way to keep them busy. So I blend the theoretical part and the study, study so far. So from Montessori to Reg approach to those to see how we can blend those with my approach as designer. I use a lot of theater. And so acting the physical part of imagination with your body. Um, for instance, I ask the student to think about if there are dots, what happened now? So now you are dots. So how you act, you, your friend, now you create a line. So it's quite a physical way to do, right? And I try to blend this and uh, develop some classes for kids that start from two years old to up. So first I did the book with my daughter, Eleni. So we draw together. So I draw, she pick color and shape, she like it. And we develop the book. From the book, went out on Amazon. And this book was requested by parents, especially a specific group of parents, Italian parents abroad. So I created the first series of video where I show how I create those kids uh, drawing, right? And what happened? I didn't expect, but so many sent back their sketch, kids sent back their drawing. So just following the instruction. So parents, <laughs> Call me and say, that's nice, but we spend a lot of time. It's not just 15 minutes. So that's how I engage with family and kids through those videos during the first lockdown. And then from that, I received call then from international school. They ask 
to develop some special uh, classes and a special program from them. Now we are developing to develop something very specific for international school. And you're right. So I agree to you when you say the issue with education is always not look at the university stage, higher education, but came much earlier than that. So once you are 18, your mind is quite already setting. So you have a mindset with a lot of preconception. Early on, hopefully, we, you, we are sort of the white canvas. That's why I would like to give them at least opportunity to explore. That's my idea. Fantastic. So what is, what is the title of the book you didn't say? Ah, right. <laughs> First word, <laughs> prime parole. First word, so it's an illustrated it's, book. It's yeah. in English and Italian, bilingual, yes. is it? Yes, it's fantastic. Prime, prime, yes. prime parole, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. So, yes. Wonderful. So tell us a story about how you got into teaching. Well, I was in Milan, uh, finished already my master at Politecnico and uh, was working as art director for a magazine over there. And, um, and by talking with the other friends, other designer, we're talking even with the option of teaching and that seems something far away from design practice. But in fact, it's not that far because when we work for some clients, somehow, where teach or coach them and vice versa. So somehow a friend tell me, why you don't knock the door of Instituto Europeo? And that's how I start. And actually the first class I started was adult education. I start them an introduction to product design. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. So uh, tell, us, tell us about uh, how you see the, um, the, the, the area of careers. So the, it's quite challenging now, of course, with the new, with the new uh, issues that we're having. Um, employment and apprenticeships and right. sort of, you know, how, how do you see all that uh, in, in, in this new environment? Well, that's why I think that the design mindset can be helpful, mm -hmm. especially early on in career. So, I don't think design for design is uh, what we have to look at at this point. So our skill of designer can help to teach non-designer mm -hmm. in terms of formal mentees how we see things, how we to be em empathetic with others. That's I think is the key, and that can be really something a skill that can be helpful even in terms of employment because you are, if you are able to observe people to understand what they need then you can create any sort of job so once you recognize what is next to you the context all those little things uh observing uh socialize but see how interact with people those are we design we consider our own skill but that's what we need to share with the rest of the population somehow. That's why is the, the mindset is not just a bachelor in design that can be useful. And I think this can open up even the idea of what design can do. As you know, when we start design in terms of it, even a, a university design was the idea that you start design, you became product design, web design, and pretty much we have this cube, right? And now is a sort of uh, open, it's like architecture. When you go to architecture, open your mind on infinity of possibilities. That's what we have to look at when we talk about design education. That can be embedded in many level of education. We don't expect everybody to be a designer, but again, the mindset. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. So what are the challenges you're facing in, in your teaching? Well, there are several. First, because uh, <laughs> because I always, I mean, at least since uh, 10 years, even more already, uh, I always teach students with a very different background from mine, not just in, in terms of culture, but geographically. So from Thailand uh, to China to uh, Mexico, so at least, you arrive there, you have your mindset, you, somehow your, your preconception, right? 
if you want or not, maybe you are not conscious about. But then you have to twist it or to see how you can really share your truth with people with a totally different point of view from you. So we know that design education starts somehow from Western point of view, right? From in a Western area, at least. So we still with the idea of Bauhaus, with the idea of uh, uh, Black, Black, uh, Black Mountain College. So, but those are what happened in Western. What happened when we talk to, to Asia? So to Asia is quite new design education. Well, some of the university has more than 50 years, but an established Asian approach doesn't exist yet. So I'm not the one who will create this, but we need to be aware of it. So they are being influenced by our literature and vice versa. We know a little, just a little bit about this area of the world and now is so influential. So that's what I try to learn time to time to, to be cultural focus, even in my design approach. That's why for me it's more important to read about the culture I'm teaching on more than just design principle. So I must apply the design principle to their own culture. Fantastic, fantastic. So tell us about your, your PhD research. Yes, my PhD. Uh -huh. My PhD is an alternative way of education. And of course, it's based on my case study of my experience in Thailand. Mm -hmm. So by working here since a number of years, uh, I have the chance to open between the line of some curriculum. So I help to develop some curricula and uh, I have an opportunity with uh, a good partner in crime, let's say good head of master, head of department, to have a possibility to step in and twist a bit of things. So for instance, I bring physical theater into, into a class for visual communication and to product design. So those samples are then a part of my PhD studies because I see how those non those things, so the, the free the, the theater can be applied and reverse the idea of what can be designed. So actually we share the same uh, alphabet somehow, dot point line of space for instance, but with the theater bringing there, we approach the idea of active participants. So there's like a spectator and the stage, there is no more boundaries. So mm. I try to blend the line. It's like a, somehow the flip the classroom some some somebody talk about, right? So when you ask students to be the teacher, so it's not just that, it's more to even the way you do is more acting and see the perception, working on an emotion. Sometimes I, I try to develop a brief based on student reaction to my first brief. So I give them the first script somehow and i want to see their action and based on this we build together the class that's how my phd is uh, developed it's very based on the feedback step by step yeah in the case study real case study so if there were no limitations in your teaching and learning would you do something differently in your in your in your education well, there is always limitation. So but the imagine things, that there are no limitations. Well, <laughs> designer need limitation, right? <laughs> so no limitation, of course. No, no limitation for me would be uh, really be able to expand the idea of doing those uh, uh, somehow educational experiment outside the classroom. So it's not designed as not to be only for designer. So in fact, I enjoy much more when I can, when I have the chance to teach uh, those uh, mindset to people from uh, economics, from uh, finance. So I think to be cross boundary, you know, multidisciplinary, I think that should be the best thing. And having even 
partner in class with people that maybe next to me should be a scientist and uh, people from different disciplines. That would be what we need to look at the moment, be able to open the door more than just theoretically. Mm -hmm. That's what I would like to have it. Fantastic. So how can our viewers and listeners find you? Well, you can find me on IG, Instagram, under my name, Tommaso Maggio, and Twitter, same, LinkedIn, same things. So feel free to drop a line to me. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, is there anything you'd like to leave us with? Thank you. And uh, second things again, let's uh, start a revolution. Design not for the designer only. Design for citizen. So design for not designer. Design as a mindset. Thank you so much, Tommaso. Thank you. Fantastic to have you. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye.